You know, every water system has some interesting features. San Francisco has two particularly interesting features, uh, the Samoa Water Temple and the Pulgas Water Temple. Uh, the Samoa Water Temple is located where three waters came together. The waters of Alameda Creek, uh, which is where Calaveras Reservoir is located, the waters of the Arroyo de la Laguna, which come from the Livermore Valley area. Uh, they join with Alameda Creek there to flow out through Niles Canyon. Uh, and there's the confluence with groundwater from the Snow Valley. Uh, so there actually is a small filtration gallery. It's a series of channels underground that capture water and run it into the water temple from where it's pumped to actually serve the town of Sonol, uh, which is a, a nice little feature and serves a different community here in the San Francisco Bay Area. The Pulgas Water Temple is near the end of Lower Crystal Springs Reservoir. Uh, it's another beautiful temple. It is constructed to celebrate the fact that we were bringing water from Hetch Hetchy to the Bay Area and can add it to Crystal Springs Reservoir to augment our local supply. This system, the Hetch Hetchy Regional Water System, is unique in a number of different ways. Uh, first, uh, it is really driven by gravity. This is water that flows from the High Sierra down to the customers in the Bay Area virtually by gravity. It is beautiful in that way in that most water systems have to expend a lot of energy to get water to the customers. There are no straight lines in nature, so if you ever see straight lines out here, you know it's something that we make. Uh, secondly, uh, because it's set in the National Park and the watershed is heavily protected and we work a lot with the Park Service to make sure those protections stay in place, uh, the water doesn't have to be filtered. So that's a great savings in chemicals and power costs that would otherwise have to go into water treatment. San Francisco looked at a lot of possible water sources to use for the future growth of the city when they were examining this problem back in the early 1900s. And the clear conclusion was that the Tuolumne River watershed would be the best watershed to serve San Francisco's needs. And that looking within the Tuolumne watershed, uh, here at the dam site for O'Shaughnessy Dam, this was the best place to locate a dam to actually uh, impound water and be able to deliver it to San Francisco. Uh, we're in a canyon here that has sheer granite walls and there's a narrow area here where the dam was built. Uh, and basically the, a dam built like this, uh, you carve away at the granite to make sure that you really have the most solid foundation to build on. Uh, and then they use railroads and others to, to bring in the raw materials of lumber and concrete and other things to construct uh, O'Shaughnessy Dam. It's a concrete arch dam that basically arches from one granite wall to the other in this canyon. And the force of the water pushing against the dam, actually that force is then pushed into the granite wall. So it's a very strong dam uh, that is impounding the water here for the city and county of San Francisco. The reservoir is about 320 feet deep at the dam and the reservoir extends for about eight miles upstream. The water that comes out of Hetch Hetchy Reservoir uh, leaves through uh, a tunnel called the Canyon Power Tunnel, which carries it about nine miles downstream. Uh, the tunnel is about 12 feet in diameter. It's carved out of granite. It gets to a set of what we call penstocks, which are pipelines that carry it down a steep hill to a powerhouse down below. In this case, it's Kirkwood Powerhouse. That's where we generate hydroelectricity from the, the drinking water that goes to San Francisco. Uh, after it leaves Kirkwood Powerhouse, it goes into another tunnel called the Mountain Tunnel. Uh, the mountain tunnel is about 19 miles long and it carries water down the hill to a place called Priest Reservoir where it gets into that reservoir which is basically a regulating reservoir to lead to the pen stocks that carry water down to the Moccasin Powerhouse. The Moccasin Powerhouse is the next place that uh, hydroelectric power is generated by the drinking water for yeah. San Francisco. Yeah, the reservoir is the last uh, place in the system where water from Hetch Hetchy sees daylight. From here, it goes into totally closed conduits uh, before delivery to the tap or to come out in uh, Crystal Springs Reservoir. Today we're delivering 250 million gallons per day. So if you want to know what 250 million gallons per day looks like, it looks like that much water. And that's enough to meet all the city's needs for right now. We can bypass this reservoir, so if something happened and this water got dirty, we didn't want to deliver it, we could
close the two closest gates and open the third gate and put all this water into that pipe and it can bypass this reservoir. So it can go underneath this reservoir and go straight into the tunnel. For the upcountry reservoirs that we have, Hetch Hetchy Reservoir is the one that provides the water supply to our system. It provides 85% of the water supply that we deliver. The other two reservoirs, Lake Eleanor and Cherry Lake, uh, provide water for power generation and for water management in cooperation with the irrigation districts through the water bank. Uh, so that in the summer like this, we release water from Cherry, uh, we generate hydroelectric power with it, the water goes down the Tuolumne River that rafters can use, and then it goes into our water bank system in Don Pedro. So we get a triple benefit out of water that's used on that side of the system. Okay, we, we can deliver Cherry and Eleanor water. How do we do it? The way we do it is we can dump water from either of these two reservoirs into the creek, let it run down the creek, and hit the Cherry Diversion Dam. Here's a picture of the Cherry Diversion Dam. It's right here. It's a tiny dam. It is literally about this tall. Okay? And all it does is it pushes water into a pair of gates that puts water into the Lower Cherry Aqueduct. And the Lower Cherry Aqueduct is a series of open channels like this and tunnels that moves water along the side of this hill slope over to Early Intake Reservoir, which is a tiny reservoir on the Tuolumne River. Here's a picture of the early intake reservoir, and this is the mountain tunnel head gate. So we can open up these gates and let water from the Tuolumne River into the tunnel and then deliver it just like it was Hetch Hetchy water. So this is kind of our emergency water supply. If anything happened to Hetchy, we would activate this system and use it to deliver water. So there is no way currently built to move water from this body of water into our transmission system. There is water in there, ostensibly counted as our water bank water, but really it's water owed to the districts that they will access at the point in time they choose to access it, counted against our water bank accounting agreement. It is used as a storage location you know, on our books, but really it's water already owed to the districts, and it's the only, they're the only ones who really can use it and access it, because there's no physical connection. We have a unique arrangement with the Turlock and Modesto Irrigation Districts. They have senior water rights on the river to San Francisco, so they have a, a call on the base flow of the river that, that we in San Francisco don't have. Uh, but when there's wet weather, you know, wet years, uh, extra water is available on the river for San Francisco. Uh, we uh, memorialize that uh, relationship uh, in something uh, that's described as the water bank in Don Pedro. San Francisco paid for half the cost of constructing New Don Pedro Dam in the late 60s uh, to increase the size of it to allow for extra water storage there. That water, that, that extra water storage capacity is something San Francisco can fill up in really wet years when we have extra water. And that water then can be taken by the irrigation districts in dry years uh, when they would normally want to just take water out of the river. That leaves the river water for us in San Francisco. So this is a very great uh, safety net for San Francisco's water supply. So that in years like the last four years that have been very dry, uh, we are able to keep filling Hetch Hetchy Reservoir almost up to capacity. A question that people ask me all the time is, what if it never rains again? Well, we, we've never experienced it not raining at all. Uh, there's always some rain, but if it never rained again, uh, we probably have within our reservoir system, uh, plus additional conservation by our customers, uh, enough water to last for three additional years. That's if it never rained again. I don't expect that, uh, but you can just do the calculation. It's an easy one. Uh, we're hopeful for uh, a lot more rain, uh, but we also need to be prepared for not much rain. So uh, this drought might, you know, might stretch us further than we've ever been before. From Moccasin Powerhouse, uh, the water is transmitted down through a series of tunnels and pipelines down towards the Bay Area. And it gets its first uh, drinking water treatment at a little place called Tesla on the west side of the San Joaquin Valley. So most of the water comes from up the hill here to the east. The water is treated, okay? We don't send raw water to everybody. The water is treated. We do add a chlorine residual we add a disinfectant to the water before it gets to the customers 
That's the form of the treatment, essentially. We don't have to run it through a very large filter plant and remove impurities from the water that are necessary if they are present. It's necessary to remove those to allow the disinfectant that goes with the water into the distribution systems to work right. So if you have stuff in your water, you got to take it out. If it's not there, you just add the disinfectant. If you take this lid off, um, you would see uh, like a bowling pin formation UV system. Lamps, they're inserted this way, and so the water comes across and it's exposed to the lamps. Water, it enters underneath the parking lot out there. It manifolds into 12 pipes, these. They all connect on the other side and go back and they go into the Coast Range Tunnel. Right now, we're probably using about six or eight of them. There's a lot of redundancy here. Uh, in case one of these reactors goes offline, we can't, we can't call up Hetchy and say, hey, can you turn the water off? We got a problem here. Uh, it's not how water works. We got to keep it going or the, the, the water's not compressible. <laughs> we can't just turn a valve over here and everything stops. So one of the more distinctive features around the landscape here, as you can see it from uh, 10 miles away in any direction, uh, is a 50-foot uh, black tower behind me over my right shoulder. And that is the entrance to our tunnel. It's 26 miles long and it goes to the Bay Area. And that tower is essentially a big surge chamber. It's just an empty tower that goes up 50 feet. And if for some reason the, uh, the pressure changes on the demand side of our whole water system by customers taking more or less water, the water has a place to go when that pressure changes. It'll go up the shaft and then go back down the shaft. And the reason why we built it is it gives the, it gives the system an ability to relieve the pressure instead of blowing up a pipe, which is what the Romans figured out 2,000 years ago when they shut a valve off in Rome and they've got a terracotta pipe going for miles upstream, the whole thing blows apart. So it's just a pressure relief mechanism. On the other end of the Coast Range Tunnel, uh, it gets into the Sonol Valley where it's joined by waters that come from our Alameda County reservoirs that are filtered at the Sonol Valley Water Treatment Plant. And that's an important point to know. We have to filter our waters from our local reservoirs. Uh, so all those waters together uh, comprise the Hetch Hetchy Regional Water System. Again, 85% comes from Hetch Hetchy, 15% comes from the local reservoirs. It's delivered to communities that then within those communities, it's carried directly to customers. We carry it directly to customers in San Francisco. Our customers have been great at conserving water. San Francisco going into this drought, residential usage was about 49 gallons per capita per day. Now that we're into the drought deeply, they've gotten water use down to about 41 gallons per capita per day. That's incredibly low. Uh, that's, a, that's a great job and people have done it uh, by changing out fixtures, you know, replacing high flow toilets with low flow toilets, uh, replacing high flow shower heads with low flow shower heads, putting aerators on faucets, and people are also, you know, currently, if they have some irrigated landscape, in a lot of cases, they're letting it go. Those are little things that help. All of them help, uh, and really the most important thing is to be aware of your water usage and keep it to a minimum.